So my name is David, and uh, John and I, John Oquist, we decided to attack the uh, challenge of the med kit in space. I think it was called 3D AstroMed devices. And the, uh, the basic idea being that uh, if you're on the ISS, or worse, if you're on a mission to Mars, uh, the closest hospital is quite far away. So the question is, what's the ideal med kit to carry into space? And our answer is that it's a med kit that can transform to your needs. Big surprise. Yeah, 3D printing is a thing, and we're going to explore it today. Here we go. All right, so we fired up MediPrint. What do we have? We've got a, a UI where we can select the injured crew member <laughs> aboard the ISS. I think uh, today Buzz and, uh, and John are off the hook, but poor John Doe over here, he got injured <laughs> during the, the course of the mission. It's that red shirt, I'm telling you. Um, which part of John's body was injured? I think it was his left arm. And uh, although on the ISS it is very common don't be so close. Okay. Although it is very common to, um, to break a finger uh, on board the ISS um, or, or perhaps an arm, today uh, John here suffered a wrist break. And um, you notice that this is something that we can build out of standard plastic. It's very light, easy to ship on board uh, a space mission. Um, and uh, I'd be lying if I told you it wasn't, it wasn't cool to uh, print one out and try it on myself. So big respect for John for getting these uh, models together. Here we have it rigged up with uh, some, pardon me, some uh, Velcro to go around my arm. Uh, but the really interesting thing, though, about space and 3D printing is that astronauts are actually scanned before and after their missions. So we actually know their dimensions very precisely. And if there are any modifications, uh, pardon me, any variations due to musculature, you know, atrophy or, or hypertrophy, we can uh, customize these models to, uh, to fit a given astron. So for a demo of that, when we go to print it, we can actually customize a given mesh to someone's anatomy. Print it, get a perfect fit. Like so. Thank you. Well, I, I like that use of data that we're already taking and then thinking how can we use that to um, prevent things that you know would be tough to, to deal with. And it, um, you mentioned common to break fingers. Um, it, I wouldn't actually say that's true. It, when I think about uh, what, it, what would be the most likely thing that could get broken, fingers come to mind for me because they're just the smallest you know, in terms of you'd actually have to hit something pretty hard to break an arm or a leg. Although that scenario is not as far away as you'd think in that if you're flying through the station, if you end up running into something that's fixed in place, you know, you're actually bringing your, you know, 120, 30 pounds or 180 pounds of force, you know, in as you're flying by. So things definitely, I think, could get broken, but I, I think of the smaller things first. I was especially intrigued at the end there um, because I think your dimensions will change in space to a certain extent due to exercising. So you think that you can visualize the model and then say, okay, so she ate a lot of Girl Scout cookies up there. Let's add on a little, and uh, then you could, and then you could actually design the cast from there. Well, I think I think that if you can take a couple key um, tape measure measurements in space, I think you can you can identify that. I think that uh, skeletally, my understanding is that we don't change that that much, um, but it's, it's more the the soft tissue that's going to change. Uh, so if, again, if, I think if we combine a pretty uh, thorough, you know, musculoskeletal model that's taken on Earth as a baseline, uh, and combine that with tape measures or measurements in space, we can arrive at a fairly good um, estimate. Uh, again, I, I haven't combined his research with my own, but I, I do have a friend who who performed his uh, PhD thesis on this exact topic on creating a statistical shape models for the bones of the body. That sounds great. Another application in a different way would be we run with harnesses on the treadmill. And actually how those harnesses fit is extremely important and actually really difficult. And you do this, you know, for half an hour, an hour a day. And often people, you know, have injuries from the harness. And so understanding the model of their body before they go and, you know, designing harnesses in that way, it's a great idea. Thanks. Okay, thank you. 